Well, hi. And on today's show, I want to take a look at some of the more recent uh, travel notices put up by the CDC in the past uh, week or uh, several days. And they put out a handful, and I want to just go over a little bit about it. What kind of outbreaks we're talking about? What's the intensity of these outbreaks? Where they're located? What can, you can do to prevent um, getting sick if you travel to any of these countries? And the first one I want to start with is the travel notice they put out concerning the chikungunya outbreak in Ethiopia. And it says um, there is an outbreak of chikungunya in Ethiopia. And let's take a look at, you know, what's going on there. And here you can see Ethiopia. They have seen since the end of July, 46,326 chikungunya cases. Um, in just a, a few months, just a massive amount. They are seeing a little bit of a decline uh, compared to some recent weeks, but it's still 3,600 suspected cases. And this is primarily in different areas of the Daira Dawa city area um, in the different villages around there. So chikungunya is a mosquito-borne virus. Um, transmitted by the Aedes mosquito. And the symptoms uh, typically take three to seven days uh, to start, up, start to appear. Um, a lot of people will experience fever and joint pain, um, swelling, rashes, and some other things. Not often fatal, but it has been shown to be fatal uh, from time to time. So CDC recommends that if you are going to Ethiopia, um, you should take all preventive measures to prevent mosquito bites, essentially, because there is no vaccine uh, or any medicine to really treat chikungunya, no vaccine to prevent it. So pr preventing mosquito bites, um, using EPA-registered insect repellent, wearing long sleeve shirts and pants. Uh, and, and I get it, it's difficult in a hot place like Ethiopia, but sleeping in air conditioned rooms and a, or a room with window screens or under an insecticide treated bed net. So that's what the CDC is recommending if you travel to Ethiopia, particularly the area around Dire Dawa where the outbreak is just incredibly intense. Another one is another mosquito borne uh, virus and there's an outbreak going on in Nigeria of yellow fever. And this actually began back in 2017 and it is essentially spread throughout the country and there are there have been cases reported in all 36 states in, in, including the federal capital territory so what is the situation this year in Nigeria um, just since there's an outbreak going on right now in Bauchi state and since August 1st uh, they have seen 243 suspected cases and 34 fatalities. So unlike chikungunya, which is not typically fatal, yellow fever can be very, very pathogenic. And, and there is a reasonably high uh, fatality rate that goes along with this virus. Um, they've also seen cases in some other states around Bauchi, like Borno, Kano, Gambi, and Katsina. So... And this outbreak is continuing to grow. Of course, Nigerian officials are trying to get people vaccinated. And that really brings me back to what the CDC has to say. So yellow fever is caused by a virus. The virus is spread to people by mosquito bites. Again, the 80s mosquito. Symptoms of yellow fever include fever, chills, headache, backache, and muscle aches. Symptoms take three to six days to develop after infection. About 15% of people who get yellow fever develop serious illness, including bleeding, shock, organ failure, and sometimes death. So a very serious disease. So what can you do to prevent it? Well, first of all, and the CDC even says this, if travelers going to Nigeria should receive vaccination against yellow fever at least 10 days before travel and should take steps to prevent mosquito bites while they're there. Those never vaccinated against yellow fever should avoid travel to Nigeria during this outbreak. Serious stuff. And the, the yellow fever vaccine is the best protection against yellow fever disease. 
Uh, anyone nine months or older who travels to Nigeria should be vaccinated against yellow fever at least 10 days before travel. So now yellow fever vaccine is currently available at only a few, few limited number of clinics in the U.S. So they offer a link um, to providers that have the yellow fever vaccine um, available. And a lot of it is travel medicine clinics and the like. So, yeah, so yellow fever in Nigeria, uh, make sure you're vaccinated, uh, prevent mosquito bites. If you're going to Ethiopia, chikungunya is a really big thing right now. Uh, again, preventing mosquito bites. Next, uh, they, the CDC put out a travel notice for the Philippines because there is a polio outbreak going on there right now. And, of course, they recommend that all travelers going there be fully vaccinated against polio. And this is what we know. Um, this is a pretty current UNICEF uh, situation report. It says, on September 19th, the Philippines Department of Health declared a polio outbreak after two confirmed polio cases of vaccine-derived polio virus type 2 uh, were reported. And there's also been environmental samples taken from Manila, the, the capital city, the biggest city there, and Davao down in Mindanao that tested for um, vaccine-derived poliovirus type 2 and type 1. So they say circulating vaccine-derived poliovirus is highly contagious and expected to spread rapidly due to low level of population immunity against poliovirus type 2. Uh, circulating vaccine-derived poliovirus type 2 is considered a public health emergency. And the Philippines are going through uh, a massive uh, vaccination plan right now, trying to get a lot of these children, millions of them actually, under the age of five vaccinated against polio. So back to the CDC. Um, they say, what can travelers do to prevent polio? CDC recommends that all travelers to the Philippines be vaccinated fully against polio. In addition, adults who have already been fully vaccinated should receive an additional single lifetime booster dose of polio vaccine. Even if you were vaccinated as a child or have been sick with polio before, you may need a booster dose just to make sure you are protected. If you are in the Philippines for more than four weeks, the Philippine government may require you show proof of polio vaccination before you leave the country. To meet this requirement, you should get your polio vaccine between four weeks and 12 months before you leave the Philippines. So, yeah, so, and... It, just a little brief description of what polio is. It's a, of course, it's a viral disease. It is a crippling and potentially deadly disease that affects the nervous system. Um, good hand washing practice can help prevent the spread of this disease because the virus lives in the feces of an infected person. People infected with the disease can spread it to others when they do not wash their hand, hands well after defecating. People can also be infected if they drink water or eat food contaminated with infected feces. Um, the pathology, some people only have minor symptoms like fever, tiredness, nausea, headache. However, um, polio, infection, polio infection can cause permanent loss of muscle function called paralysis. And it can be fatal if the muscles used to, uh, for breathing are paralyzed in, or if there's an infection of the brain. So polio can be very serious um, once a massive scourge around the world, it's it's minimum now, but it's it appears to be getting a little bit worse in 2019. And the last travel notice I want to take a look at is uh, for the for Pakistan, and and that's due to extensively drug resistant typhoid fever, and they're they've been going through Pakistan has been dealing with an outbreak for several years now, and of course extensively drug resistant. Um, means that these particular infections do not respond to most antibiotics. So it's very, very serious. Um, and a lot of pe travelers to Pakistan have returned back to North America or Europe or Australia and brought this um, very drug-resistant typhoid fever back with them. So 
let's take a look at how bad the numbers are in Pakistan. And this is from um, late August, uh, the weekly epidemiological monitor from uh, the World Health Organization. And it says Pakistan is experiencing a continuous surge of extensively drug resistant or XDR salmonella typhi uh, since November 2016. Now, through the reporting week of thir week 34 of 2019, uh, more than 10,000 cases have been reported from different uh, districts of the province of Sindh. Uh, and there has been no associated deaths according to this report. Now, if you take a look at, let's see if I can expand this a little bit. So here, here's the cases uh, since 2016. They saw these are the some of the different districts in Sin province and of course we know Karachi and Hyderabad are the two main uh, places where this XDR typhoid is um, infecting people and in 2016 they only saw 12 cases that jumped up to 664 in 2017 nearly 5,000 in 2018 according to these numbers and so far this year again nearly 5,000. So we're talking about a total of 10,365. About two thirds have been from Karachi and one third or so from Hyderabad. So yeah, so big, big problem there. Um, and it says here, in response to this current surge, the government has been implementing control measures, including health education, focusing water hygiene, sanitary disposal, and food safety and vaccination. So Pakistan's making some efforts there, but clearly this is a huge, huge problem over there. And so it's a huge, huge problem for potential um, travelers to the area. So let's go back to this. The CDC, just a, a brief uh, summary of typhoid fever. It's a serious disease caused by the bacterium Salmonella typhi, uh, spread by contaminated food and water. Symptoms often include fever, weakness, stomach pain, headache, cough, loss of appetite. People may have diarrhea or constipation. In rare cases, typhoid fever can be fatal. Treatment with antibiotics is, is, is essential. And there is a vaccine that can help uh, people from getting it. So what does the CDC recommend for travelers? The CDC recommends that all travelers, even short-term travelers, to South Asia including Pakistan, be vaccinated against typhoid fever before travel. Two typhoid fever vaccines are available in the U.S., an oral vaccine and an injectable vaccine. Travelers should take one or the other. Uh, the oral vaccine approved for people six years and older should be taken as directed at least one week before departure. The injectable vaccine is approved for people two years and older Travelers should receive the injectable vaccine at least two weeks before departure. Now, neither vaccine is 100% effective, so travelers should also practice safe eating and drinking uh, habits, which would include, let's see if I can get, bring that up real quick, right? Uh, try, you know, hot food is typically safe, um, drier packaged food is, things that are risky, raw foods, street foods, um, uh, drinks that are typically safe, bottled or canned drinks, hot drinks, uh, things that can be risky, of course, is the tap water, fountain drinks, and ice, right? Even if you have ice in your drink at a restaurant or a bar or whatever, that ice could be from tainted tap water, and uh, you're at just as much risk of typhoid or other types of pathogens um, while you're in visiting one of these countries, so... Anyway, so those are four of the recent travel notices published by the CDC in about the past week or so. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it helps if you plan on traveling to any of these countries. Um, if you like the video, go ahead and let us know. Subscribe to the channel. Comment below. Share it with your friends. And I'll see you next time.